You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hello and welcome to Art Talks. I'm Joanne Bauer, your host of the show on West Hartford Community TV. And I'm pleased to have with me three guests today. These guests are poets from the Faxon Poetry Group that meets in West Hartford at Faxon Branch Library. So I'm going to, I think, introduce them right now. These are friends of mine, June Mendelkern, Jerry Howard, and Francis Cheng. Welcome, and thank you for joining me. It's our pleasure. <laughs> thank you, Joanne. <Jimmy. laughs> it is a pleasure. So I want to make sure that I say this right up front, that last month and this month, I've had guests who are part of the Faxon Poetry Group. And the reason we're highlighting Faxon is because the group has its 10th anniversary coming up of its anthology, its publication. And this is our most recent one. I've brought along here just as samples. I've brought maybe six or seven of them since the time. I've been with the group maybe seven years. And um, we have someone here who's been with the group, actually the group, for 14 years, right? Right, June? Indeed. Yeah. So the group itself started in 2002 late in the year, uh, but the, the actual publication, the actual anthology, didn't come into being until Steve Alekna joined our group. And he's a wonderful West Hartfordite also. He's the one who every year is responsible for seeing that this thing comes together with at, uh, two pages, two pages of poetry from each member who wishes to be part of the anthology. And I will give a shout out to Cricket Press, which is also in West Hartford, because they are our partner in putting this together. I want to tell you when we will have our publication anthology party, and that's going to be April 24th, that's a Sunday, right here in town. It's going to happen at the Noah Webster Main Library at 20 South Main Street. And it's an open and free event. So all, you all can come over at 1 o'clock. Oh, I'm sorry. Whoops. 1.30. 1.30. In fact, I do want to make a point that last month we announced some mistakes about the location, which has changed, and the time, which we were just plain wrong about last month when we announced it. So let me correct that. The event will be Sunday, April 24th, beginning at 1.30 here at the main West Hartford Library, 20 South Main Street. And one thing that is, is wonderful, each year we have the Poet Laureate of the town, the Poet Laureate of West Hartford, which is currently, who is currently Christine Beck. And we also have our special guest, Tom Nicotera, who's a poet quite well known in the greater Hartford area. And he brings percussions and he makes uh, a lot of fun of it. And we will have refreshments and just a, a lovely, lovely time. So come on out. We welcome guests. And we like you to get to see what the facts and poets can do. <laughs> now, let me turn to you, June, first, because I know that you've got a new book coming out. I do. Yes, please tell us. <laughs> um, my name is June Mandel Kern. Uh, I am the only one of the group who is an original member. There were four of us who started in the late winter of 2002. I had just moved to West Hartford from New Jersey and had only really started to write a few months seriously, a few months before. And so when I saw the notice on the bulletin board of the library, I, I took my courage in my hands and I came <laughs> feeling like a fraud, you know, who am I to say I'm a poet? And there I met four extraordinary women, three women who were with me as, as members of the group, and Marsha Lewis, who was the librarian at the Faxon Branch Library. And it was Marsha's brainchild, and she has been the guiding spirit behind it with a very gentle but real and sure touch all the way through. 
I have seen the group change and grow, but it's a remarkable group, to, in my opinion, in the sense that it has remained true to the core principles, and that is of encouragement to people who want to write poems or who, or who we don't really want to write, they just sort of write us. <laughs> they um, write us. <laughs> it's, a safe, it. it's a safe place. It is. We, we, we focus on the work itself, not on the personalities, not on personalities of the people, but on the work itself. And we appreciate the work from every point of view. We may not agree with it, we may, it may not mm. be our style, mm -hmm. but we appreciate what is behind it, mm -hmm. the effort to be real and to be honest and truthful about our, our, our feelings and our work. Yeah. And so from that point of view, I really do think it's, it's an extraordinarily remarkable group. I agree with you, yeah. and I, I just want to second that. It's a group just slightly different from what you said. I think that we are accepting of all personalities in the group. It's a diverse group. And sometimes it's as many as 20 or 26 people around the table. It's really grown from the four that you're mentioning back at the very, very beginning. And there's such a conviviality. I don't know many groups. I'm involved with many, many groups. And I don't know of any offhand that's as wonderfully accepting and supportive as Faxon is. Which it's is really a blessing. Which is really remarkable, considering that it, it has almost no, no set format. We yes. just get together and we read our poems. I am unquestionably the oldest person in the group. Uh, which is not hard for me because I'm the oldest person in almost any group <laughs> I'm in because I had my 91st birthday last year. Yes, June. and no one believes it, may God I bless say. It. Absolutely. Well, it happens to be true. I don't believe it myself, but it happens to be true. Uh, and I write about who I am. I have been, of course, a wife and mother and sister and daughter uh, and a woman mainly. <laughs> I write as a woman. Yes. Uh, I, I write about who I am, so many of my poems have to do with aging, with loss, because all of us have experienced loss, no matter how old we are, how young we are. Uh, I have my second book, a new book coming out. This is just the proof. I just got Yay, it the that other is day. so exciting. I'm so June. excited. It's my baby. Um, it's being produced by on Amazon and will be available after next week, probably. It's called To the Far Country which is the country of growing old and the country that all of older, us older uh, older <laughs> <laughs> old the country that all of us will get to hopefully sooner or later um so uh, uh yes i do want to say that i my husband of almost 60 years died three years ago he was a world war ii veteran um, he had a, a, a neurological disease toward the end of his life. He had Parkinson's disease, and I was his caregiver for many years. Uh, and as I say, he died three years ago. So a lot of the poems in the book have to do with that period of time in my life. <laughs> After his death, it took me almost a year mm -hmm. to stop being numb. I just did what I had to do. But I found my way back through writing mm -hmm. many of these poems. And um, it's a remarkable way to live. And so I'm ready journey. to move forward with my life as much time as I will have. And from that point of view, I will read a poem. Yes, definitely. I want to say that, just really briefly, that we've been witness and, and blessed to be witness to that process with you. Thank you. And that's part of what yeah. a, support, a poetry mm -hmm. support group does. I don't know where it's going to go from here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. But we'll remain, to, remain, oh, we'll to remain together. It'll be interesting to see where it yeah. goes. I don't know myself. Mm -hmm. This one is called Free Will. <clears throat> when I was a child, I belonged to my parents to be molded in traditions of their forebears. Even my adolescent rebellion followed the shape of the mold. I married a man of appropriate race, religion, and class for decades living the scheduled life. Mm -hmm. True to my woman's role, I was nurturer and caregiver for our children, for our parents, for our cultural institutions, and finally for my husband in his sad protracted farewell. Many times in those busy years, I longed to seek my freedom, mm -hmm. climb aboard a bus, boat or plane, 
and disappear into the human void. The ties were tight and strong of history, custom, family and clan, and yes, of love. Mm. And now the ties are loosened. Suddenly the door slips open, beckoning with possibilities. What will it take to step through, lift my face to sunlight, and say to the universe, well, here I am at last. Very Thank good. You. Very, oh, very well, good. Excellent. Thank you. Jerry, let's, let's move on to you. You're one of the newer... Uh, uh, yeah, in newer, the last four years. Uh, last four years, you've, you've come to Facts and Poetry. And I just showed up one day, and they were as welcoming and wonderful as they are today when you show up. And how did you hear about the group? Do you remember? I, I think I read about it. Uh -huh. And uh, I had, uh, 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 my wife and I have a place in Key West, and I belong to the Key West Poetry Guild. It's been going on for about 45 years. Wow. And, <laughs> and so that was my first exposure. And so when I saw it here, you know, so uh, I've lived in West Hartford about 60 years or so, and uh, was just uh, thrilled that you have the similar thing right here. Uh, right in your backyard. In the backyard. <laughs> in the backyard. And what a wonderful, eclectic, uh, interesting, intelligent, uh, enthusiastic group uh, of welcoming souls. And you've brought some poetry for us. Yes, today. I did. I what did. have you got? Would you well, like to read one? Yeah, one of the poems, uh, I'm privileged to have uh, eight grandchildren and eight great-grandchildren. You know, I, I married very, very young. And, uh, <laughs> and so one, one of them uh, asked me one day, uh, Papa, you write poetry. What's a poem? And it got me thinking about what is a poem? And I wrote this. A poem is morning's first light and twilight's last remains. It's the happiness and change and the joy in just the same. It's destiny's knock and opportunity's open door. It's the smell of spring and fall's desire to be more. A poem's the reality of now and the best of past whens, the freshness of youth and the wish to begin again. Mm -hmm. An older age and the wisdom to be shared, a time alone and another to be paired. A poem is you and me and everyone in between. It's light and darkness, the seen and the unseen. It's time rushing rapidly in the clock's steady path. It's words and sounds and truth that will last. Thank you. Very lovely. That's a poem. Many truths that will <laughs> last and some that will fade. That's we, true, very we true. Just and I, 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 uh, won a national contest on, on Oh, that. tell us about that. Well, uh, on a group called Poetry Matters. Mm -hmm. And they liked it so much that uh, uh, they hired me to come down to uh, South Carolina in April uh -huh. uh, and do a one-day uh, workshop on poetry. Nice, uh, Jerry. A paying gig. I, actually, a paying <laughs> gig. And I'm on a panel with the Poet Laureate of South Carolina. Very cool. Uh, and a couple other poets. And then I'm to do an hour, an hour and a half of my own poetry. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, and, and, and that was based on the poem that you read us. Originally, oh, yeah. Very and nice. uh, then we've done other things together very, on that very basis. Nice. But uh, poetry is just, you know, it's chronicling the future. Uh, one thing I'm going to do in April uh, is, uh, last April I talked to the West Hartford Squires, which is about 50 men mm -hmm. uh, who meet in Elmwood, and, and they said, what do you want to talk about? I asked them, what, what do you want me to talk about? And they said, anything you want. And I said, talk about poetry. Oh, it's National cool. Poetry Month, and Facts and Poets was just down the corner. Yes. And so they seemed to like it. And so the old guard has asked me to speak, and that will be 100 or 150 uh, retired right. men. And obviously the subject is poetry. Oh, that's so great. And that's in April, and in that's April. in West Hartford. In West Hartford, right here. Francis, I want to come to you. And 
Uh, why don't you tell us, because I've forgotten, You've, you were there, I believe, when I started. For 10 years. You've been there 10 years yes. in, with Faxon. Have you been in the a anthology for t all 10 years? All 10 years. Oh, I excellent. Started. Well, excellent. it's like uh, Jerry said, uh, I was curious. My wife told me, you know, Faxon Library had a uh, uh, poetry class mm -hmm. or poetry group. Why don't you go to see? So I came here and uh, I was wondering if I was qualified. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I walked you in. that feeling. And, uh, <laughs> we all do. It had uh, about seven or eight, you know, po poets there. Okay. So started reading, and you know, one after the other. And uh, now it's my turn. And uh, Marshall, the manager said, you have anything to read? I was so embarrassed because I never wrote a poem before. I said, I'm sorry, I will miss it this time, but next time I will have one. Yes. So, uh, so you checked it out first. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's very valid, <laughs> yeah. right? So next time I wrote one and you know, it sounds too scientific. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you have to say you are the scientist of our group with Double PhD, right, <laughs> Francis? Yeah. That's yeah. what Jerry meant by intelligent. Here we have Francis with two doctor doctoral degrees. Thank you, because I I am a jack of all trades. Actually, <laughs> I, I started with chemical engineering in undergraduate training on Taiwan. Yes. Then I came to Baylor University. Yes. Then. Uh, I got a scholarship of teaching assistant Excellent. in chemistry. So I started, you know, starting chemistry and uh, got very interested in it. So I thought, well, maybe I should change my major, you know. And after one year, I said, uh, I got, got my master's degree. I told my professor, and a professor said, uh, no, you cannot. You cannot leave. Because if you leave, I lose all the students. You know, really? all the students graduate this year. Oh, and I, I would see. lose uh, all of them. So you should stay. Yes. But one condition, you should pass your qualified exam, you know, PhD qualified exam to be eligible to stay. Yes. I say, oh, it's a tough call, you know, <laughs> how could I pass? And my professor said, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, explain anything. You go home and study. So, wow. So I went back and, you know, I cranked, I stayed in the library, you know, oh, studying all the requirements. And luckily I passed it. It was marginally. <laughs> yeah, marginally. Well, hey, you passed. <laughs> You're amazing. You You're are amazing. amazing, my friend. <laughs> and we should say, I think we can say as a group, that, Francis, you have oftentimes brought us scientific facts and knowledge. Facts, not facts, and, but facts and knowledge through your poetry. And you also have made shifts in your writing style away from some of that over the years. And we've seen these changes, of course, amongst yes. all of us. Yes. I learned a lot because I found out, you know, the member of the faction group have all different backgrounds, like antigen, they had a scientific background. Mm -hmm. And uh, Joanne has a PhD in English, oh, one of the top. And, uh, <laughs> That Uncle Jerry had business background or <laughs> still in business. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, that, that gave me an encouragement. Even I have chemistry background, my English wasn't perfect, but I'll try. <laughs> That's so true. When we say it's a diverse group, it really is. And, and, and we, we start with the poetry, but of course, everyone's life history comes out through the poems, too, through our writings. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Because, what have you brought for us today? Yes, I I like to read a poem which I you know wrote for a tenth publication, if I may. Yes, please do. Uh, for yeah, the tenth the I tenth publication for yeah, this year's publication. Yeah, this one, right? Yes. Page please twenty do. 
No, I think I'll follow page along. Page 26. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry, page 24. All right. Yes. Yeah. At um, Moonlit Beach. Strolling on Moonlit Beach. Mine roll by surfing tide. Soothing breeze can offer for ride. Swooping swallows greet you. Strolling with hunched grandpa as kid, holding his cane for support and comfort. Stroke had crippled his arm and leg, his shadow ball up like mushroom. Moonlight evoked pensive feeling. Ancestors and parents are now history. As the moon, what shall I be? Mm. It brings on receding tide. Strolling on moonlight, on moonlit beach, watching stars, Jupiter and Venus in waste sky, forever together in harmony. Oh, that's beautiful, Francis. I, I don't recall having heard that one before. Nor do I. What Did wonderful you read images. It? Did you re <laughs> it's the beautiful, beautiful images. I love these two lines. Ask the moon what shall I be. It blinks on receding tides. Thank beautiful. you. Well, You're my teacher. <laughs> well, I, I, w I will. I, this brings me to wanting to thank June for being a co-editor all of these years. She's really the one who digs in and looks at our punctuation and looks at our word choices and makes yeah. you know, suggestions oh. very gently, I would say. <laughs> very and I want to say something about Francis's. I love Francis's work. Um, English is obviously not his first language, and yet he writes in English. Yes. And there are so many charming little, occasional little mix-ups, little <laughs> trans transpositions, and I hate to correct them because they're so Francis. They're so much a part of what you write. Thank you. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's right. Right. It is true. It's quite a respect for the voices, the many voices yeah. that we do here around the table. May I say something yes, further about absolutely. myself? Uh, I published my first book six years ago, and at that time I decided to include my maiden name as a as a focus of my identity, although I've been married much to, to a man named Mandelker much longer than I had been uh, June Sidron. But I did want to include that, so the name I go under is June Sidron Mandelker, which is a bit of a mouthful. Um, <laughs> yes, but. and do you know what? I want to just hold up the book again. It's a beautiful cover. What, Great what's color. the cover image from? Beautiful. Is that, um, is that what I'm, the man that I'm seeing? Has, his daughter is a professional photographer. Her name is oh, Kathy Strauss. Very nice. And I saw this wonderful photograph, and I, and I love the nervously, back. and she took the photo of me at the it's back, beautiful. too. I asked her if I could have it for my book. That It was very nervy because she's professional. And, you know, you don't ask professionals <laughs> for free, <laughs> free photos. And I like the color. But I knew that it would be so perfect for the, um, for, the, for the topic of the book to the far country, which, as I've said before, is the country that hopefully we'll all reach, the country of growing old, older. Um, I what also, you have? even you though have? I write as a woman, I have a master's degree in geoscience, which is my um, very great interest. And I am interested in the position of humanity in the universe, where we are in, in, in the cosmos, yes. uh, from a layperson's point of view, of course, because yes. I'm, not, I'm not working as a scientist. No, and I understand. So I, I also appreciate you know, all of the information that we've gotten from Francis. Um, <clears throat> but as, as he said, uh, the group is very diverse as you know, in many ways. It is. Uh, and we, we, we gain from each other. We learn from each we other. Do. We and that's one of the do. remarkable things and that we're able to do. What life is about. Yeah. Who else has a poem, that, another poem, that they would like to share? June? I would like to, Let's yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know which one <laughs> to read. Um, <clears throat> well, let me do this one. Um, the book is called To the Far Country. And this poem is called From the Far Country. Mm. <clears throat> My arms are too short now to embrace the world. Tissues from an unlucky pig 
line my artery walls. An implanted device provides the current to, plump, uh, to pump blood in my heart. My knees lack cartilage. Bone on bone, says the cheerful surgeon. <laughs> the physical therapist sent by a thoughtful government prods and stretches with weights and bands. Nevertheless, requiring my attention is the plane exploded over the Egyptian desert and the terrorist attacks in Paris. Desperate refugees seeking sanctuary are massing at the gates. When the rising seas overtake the deltas on which the millions live, who will take them in? Where will they go? My arms are too short now to embrace the world. My heart too fragile. My knees too delicate to carry me to the barricades. Only my words remain. From the far country, I summon them. They are not compromised. Mm -hmm. They have no limits. They can still encircle the globe, send forth the call for human rights and dignity, justice with compassion, universal liberty, and truth. Well Thank done. You. Very well done, Very Jim, beautiful. as always. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, and you have shown us that your arms are not too short <laughs> to embrace the world, of course. Francis, w do, would you have another poem Please. that you would? I have uh, another poem, but I, can I sing a song? I well, we, we're coming to the very end, really, oh. so I, I need a short poem from oh, either you or Jerry. Maybe it's a song is short. Oh, okay. a, poem. a poem is good. A poem is better. I'm okay. sorry. Four Seasons for Country Boy. Little boy, brave, cool spring. Venturing outside with running nodes. Chasing butterflies in prairie. Tumbling over with bloody nose, foggy dawning, Harold muggy summer, golden retriever chase red fox, little boy jump on pony back, suffering free fall with black eyes, golden forage, outshine azure skyline, taking hayride on pumpkin wagon. <laughs> Golden eagle soaring high. Migrating geese wave goodbye. Drap pumpkin vine, litter on farm. Falling snow turn into grimming carpets. Milking cow rush into cold balm. Fruiting boy comes the heart. Thank you. Very good. Francis, thank you. Yep, so that, really, we're having to, Jerry, I'm sorry. You, no, I'm sorry. That's we quite have right. to wrap it up. I, well, that's more important. Absolutely. Yes, we have to wrap it up. It's absolutely you know, I, joy I, to I be here. I said it was going to go quickly, and it does. And it did. So I thank each of you for being here, and I thank my, my viewing audience. And again, this is Art Talks. I'm Joanne Bauer. We hope to see you next month, also, and and uh, come over to Faxon if to the to the uh, come over to the library, the main library, on April twenty fourth, if you can. Thank you. Thank you.